Okay, so in the last video, I told you guys to create the orgs companies controller, and I hope you really did make it, or else you're gonna be completely lost in this video. So, without further ado, oh yeah, by the way, all you needed to do was run Rails generate controller um, org companies. And that should have made the controllers for you. If you haven't, then go to your terminal and run that, run that command. Other than that, let's get back to our video. So what I want to do first is I want you to define the new function. So the first thing you do is you would go tab to give an indent because we want things to look very pretty. Um, and then you will define new. And then we'll have, we'll call something called signed in user. So this is something we haven't defined yet, but we're gonna get to that. So hold on to your pants. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start make a new company object. So org company or org company new. So that will make us a new company object. Let's just give some comments for these guys just so we know what the heck we're doing. And the next one is gonna be make new company object. And we're also going to look for our contact info. So let's just build our contact info because even our company needs their own contact info. So we're just going to define it as um, org contact new attributes. And again, we're going to give this guy some comments. So we're going to make a contact object with some empty attributes. That's what it's for. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have company or contacts build contact info. So that is because if we look back to our company's controller or our company's model or company, you could see that our company has and belongs to many org contacts so uh, really a company can have many contacts addresses so if, like if you think about mcdonald's then it has de many different locations so it makes sense for it to have you know, a couple a couple contact addresses here and there right and if you look at org contact then you could see that it belong or contact um like org contact really just belongs to one org company if you think about it uh, one franchise of the McDonald's or one store of the McDonald's belongs to the bigger franchise. So the store that you usually go to, uh, you can think about it as one contact address and that will belong to the entire McDonald's franchise. You gotta love using fast food as examples to teach you guys Ruby on Rails. Amazing. So I get better get some thumbs up for that. Uh, moving on, we're gonna have to talk about this signed in user. You're gonna ask be asking me what the heck is that? So it's it's an, it's another function. So that's what it is, and we're gonna have to define it. So let's define it as signed in user end. And this is gonna use something from our last video, um, signed in. So um, one thing I forgot to, to tell you guys is to make this private because it's a function that outsiders don't really need to call. So it, when we have functions that outsiders don't really have to call, like our users, then it's best to keep them private if they're going to be used as inside functions by other functions in the same class. So all I want you to do here is type in unless signed in um, and then you put an end at the end. Then you put in store location, redirect to signed sign in URL. And we're going to give him a flash message and saying, warning, please sign in. Please sign in. So let me explain this. So remember in the last video, I told you guys to make a session helper. If you skipped it, then you're completely screwed for this video because you won't understand what the heck I'm talking about. But we defined all these functions and signed in is a function that we defined here. And it's a function that we can use in our or company's controller class. So that's where we call our signed in. It is also where we call it store location to store the location of our user. Um, if he's trying to access a page that he can't access, we will store the last page that he's on, 
get them to log in at the login page and then and then redirect them back to the page that he was on after he logged in. That's the store location that we have here. Now going back to our our function, so what this function sign in user does is it checks whether the user signed in. If he's if he's if he's signed in, then we won't show him this. If he's not signed in, then we'll store his location and redirect him to the sign the sign in page with a warning to telling tell him, tell him to sign in. And how are we able to use the sign in function? Well, if you watched the last video, we included this the sessions helper in the application controller and this this application controller is actually pretty much loaded on every single page that you're gonna you're gonna hit. So that's how everything works. If you skipped the last video, then I'm a nice guy because I just described to you in like two seconds how everything works. But that's all I really wanted to go through in this video to keep things really short. Um, again, um, all these functions are found in your sessions helper, and that's all I wanted to go through in this video. Please rate, comment, subscribe if you have not already. Share this video on your social media if you really liked it and think people can benefit. And leave your comments and questions in the comment box and I'll get back to you whenever I can. Alright guys, take care.